Different generations have been affected by and have responded to recent events like the coronavirus pandemic and the social issues we're facing as a nation in a myriad of ways. But today we're joined by Erica Pierce, Millennial Success Strategist, to talk about millennials and their recent impacts. Hi, Erica. Hi, how are you? I am doing well. I am a millennial myself, so I'm excited <laughs> to have the conversation. Um, but I think that means that we really have to start at the beginning. You know, sometimes people get it mixed up as far as who's a millennial and who's not. So tell us what is a millennial? What time frame uh, were they born in? So it's funny. That is the first question I always get is how old do you have to be to be a millennial? So millennials are between 24 and 39 which is surprising to some people. They think millennials are just 20, you know, something sleeping on their couch, but the oldest millennial will turn 39 this year. Yes, I saw something on Instagram during the pandemic that was like, hey guys, it's not necessarily the millennials who are out not following social distancing <laughs> rules. We're at home, married, kids, families, you know. Right. There's another generation that has emerged even after us. I think sometimes people forget that that's happened. Exactly. Gen Z. So your Gen Zs are your 23 and younger. And yes, people sometimes confuse those with millennials. But no, nope, millennials are, you know, they're grown. Some of them are very grown. <laughs> yeah, very much so. All right. So you are a millennial success strategist and you have created the Millennial Boardroom to serve this population of people. So tell us what that means and what you do. Sure. So the Millennial Boardroom is really a community that I have created that what I, I would call it a safe space where millennials can come and talk and discuss things that are relevant to them, mostly around their careers and, you know, just in terms of career paths, career growth, but also around social issues um, and personal issues, development issues. It's really a place, again, where we can have those discussions. I can help lead them. I'm what's called an exennial, so I'll throw another new <laughs> term out to you. So I'm, I'm 40, so I'm a little bit on the older side. And so I try to do some big sister coaching, I call it, and try to help millennials kind of navigate the world of adulting. So I think in this case, you know, as we study how people are reacting to the recent, you know, an unprecedented time that we're in, um, what trends are you seeing in the ways that millennials are responding and, and what sort of um, support have they needed outside of maybe what you were seeing before all of this began? This is really just, you know, it's, it's been a really uncertain time period the past few months, both with the pandemic and then, of course, what we saw in response to Mr. George Floyd um, being killed. And so as a result, we have seen millennials really become very active, become very engaged. They're very enthused about being engaged. Um, technology has played a huge part in this because as we know, social media is a way that connects millennials, not just in your community, but across the world um, behind, you know, behind causes. And so I think what will be interesting is to see, um, you know, how this all plays out over time. But I think certainly right now, millennials, you know, they're having to deal with um, you know, just uncertainty with their jobs, with their families, um, with the election. There, there's so much that's happening. And so a lot of them are having isolate, isolation issues. Um, mental health has become a really big issue for millennials because they have been much more transparent about their anxieties and just troubles that they have suffered than other generations, especially the older generations. So they, I think, need um, some support. And millennials really thrive on community on really helping each other. And so I think that's also been a really important component, um, that feeling of we're all in this together right now. What are you seeing and what are you anticipating as we get closer to November? So uh, what I'm seeing is that millennials, again, really because of technology, um, have been very engaged in what's been going on. When you go and you look at the news and, and you saw who was out um, protesting, a lot of them were younger people, Gen Z and millennials. And one of the reasons for this is because honestly, millennials make up such a large part of the population. Um, they are now superseding baby boomers. And so because of that, what the issues that are important to them, such as the economy, such as uh, um, debt and, and just uh, issues related to unemployment and social issues, gun violence, those are becoming really relevant issues and they are really choosing to speak out about them. 
I think the question that we're all trying to better understand is, will that equate to strong voter turnout in November? Um, the hope, of course, is, is yes, but also because of the pandemic, you're seeing um, efforts that we usually would see to uh, do um, voter turnout and voter enrollment. Um, th those, of course, can't happen. So we're having to rely on other ways to make sure that they are enrolled to vote and that they go out and actually vote or mail in their vote, however we end up doing it. In this age where we had to work from home, regardless of your viewpoint on it, it became a way of life. Um, kind of a two-part question being, how did millennials actually respond to something that, you know, a lot of us had been asking for for a long <laughs> time? And two, what can we learn from millennials in this time frame and how we're going to move forward? So it's funny that you say that because I've been reading a couple of studies and articles saying that even though millennials have been the ones really pressing employers to have more flexibility in the workplace and to be able to work from home, um, they are the ones that are honestly are having a lot of challenges with it and are struggling a bit um, because of the isolation that it does bring. And so millennials, again, they thrive on community, they thrive on connection. And so work for many of us, going to the office or traveling for work or doing those types of work um, events outside of our homes, that's where we get a lot of communication and connection. And so they, they, they really are, um, you know, it's been a challenge. But what millennials, I, I would say, are doing is that they're finding ways to be creative. They're finding ways to still create community. I think really millennials are probably the ones that kind of brought the whole, you know, the Zoom happy hours and all of the things we're seeing there, you know, really made, started to make that popular. Of course, connecting on social media continues to be a popular way for them to um, connect. And then also, I would say just being creative. Um, millennials are known for their side hustles. And so, you know, for many of them, this has been a time to reinvent themselves, to write books, to start businesses to you know really find other ways that they can um, connect with themselves outside of just their work because you know work right now it's hard to just work all the time <laughs> we need to find other outlets well thank you so much for those insights I think we all you know have had to really take a look at what each of us is good at what our strengths are what our experiences are and find ways to kind of blend those different things to feel good about ourselves to keep our self-esteem high to to overcome some of that isolation and the, the impacts of social distancing but also just to figure out what summer looks like when things are a little bit different you know that that perseverance and resilience is so important so thank you so much for being with us we appreciate those insights Thank you so much for having me and best of luck to everyone out there that's trying to get through these times. Absolutely. For those of you who are interested in learning more about the Millennial Boardroom, we'll make sure we post a link on our website at wtvr.com slash VTM. Well, Bill, that's a very interesting conversation. I think all generations can take something away from her advice for sure. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we, try to understand millennials because they are very different from say my generation of baby boomers and i heard a discussion this weekend about when we go through major things like the great depression uh, and one of the things that was looked at was patents on new inventions and things there was they went way down during the depression went way down during prohibition they're way down during world war ii or whatever but as soon as that was over bam all the floodgates open and i think millennials probably are not going to have that that dip because they were they were the ones like you said be careful what you ask for they were the ones asking for being able to work from home careful what you ask for though well I, yes, but I think, too, the idea that it does, the, the, sort of in line with that patent concept, right? Like you, you push, you redefine, and that's how the cheese gets moved. That's how the change happens. That's how these, these innovations become longstanding realities. And then they'll evolve again one day. But it's, it's really incredible to see that component unfolding. And she said something a couple of times about the community is important to millennials. And of course, community comes from the word common. <laughs> so these people, you know, they, they share so much in common because of social 
interaction, uh, social networks and stuff, is that maybe they won't have that huge dip uh, in creativity that, that previous generations have had. I do. I think it's um, not that anybody would be able to wrap their mind or necessarily be prepared for this situation that we're in. Granted, months and months later, we're starting to <laughs> be here <laughs> rather than continuing to wait for it to change. But with millennials, it is something about the adaptability. They've encountered so many things along the way to this point that I think has made them cautious and measured. Is that fair? Sure. Yeah, definitely. I think that's probably part of it as well. I mean, we saw when we went through the uh, Great Recession, you know, 10, 12 years ago, uh, these, these, they were children then, and they watched that, and now they got this. So it'll be interesting to see how they come through on the other side. Absolutely.